Hi, this is Rafa Joseph, and if you're watching this, then I have managed to launch my new YouTube channel. I'm playing a game called Rezogun here for the PS4. You may have heard of it. And I just wanted to see if I could get a high score on camera alongside a few guys. My previous high score in the upper right corner of the screen is uh, 1 billion 875 million. And uh, that should be quite a challenge to exceed. <laughs> Restart. I let the first sentinel escape. <laughs> I'm playing a ship with zero agility, which is uh, always a fun proposition. Or should I say always a fun prospect. It moves like slow like jelly until you get the power shield, but um, on the bright side you can always tell whether you have the power shield. And I'm trying to deliberately avoid picking up any shields until uh, I pick up the fallen hero, which will give me the power shield, because... Uh, if I already have the power shield when I pick up Fallen Hero, all it does is bomb for me. And uh, this way I can save all of my normal power-ups and what trade them in for multiplier-ups, which is going to really increase my scoring potential. I'm also trying not to miss any humans. Um, not so much for the human chain bonus to the score, but because if you don't miss any humans, then you don't get behind on a the schedule of power-ups for each day. Bridge and as you can see, I just missed them. Human in danger. A couple. Well, I didn't miss them, but I got them late. Which means I enter the next day with uh, one of my men in the upper left corner of the screen grayed out that I would have needed. Get that human, very good. Now we'll go back for the other one. So much of this game is just like boosting through enemies and uh, trying to get to humans before they fall or are chomped. And being careful where you start and stop your boost for maximum uh, destruction using the bombs that trigger at the end of the boost. I'm going to try to destroy as much stuff as possible before destroying the Sentinel, just to build my multiplier chain a little bit more. Day and then I go back and destroy the Sentinel just like that. 
and that's going to um, hopefully just give me a little bit of extra scoring push. I haven't actually lost a human yet, and as you can see, every time I save a human, um, the number of points I receive for doing that increases a little bit. By 200 each time if the human hasn't touched the ground yet, like 8,000, the next one's going to be 8,200. I'm still avoiding the shields. I'm also not picking up the multiplier ups because they just stay there and I can pick them up later. But um, if I get my multiplier too high too early, then it reduces the rate at which I can continue to build it by destroying the normal enemies. And uh, you need to really squeeze all the points you can out of this game. So, uh, you know, being able to go from like 604 to 605 there by like shooting that, uh, you know, wave of enemies is just a little bit of extra push. And if it was already at like 10.04, it would have just still been at 10.04 instead of going to 10.05. Overdrive charged. All right. This is not bad. I'm only on day two one. I have a long way to go. And as you can see with the Phobos spread fire, if you get really close to the Sentinels, Bridge then um, you can just tear through them because uh, your shots spread out, but if you're close enough to the target you're shooting, then you can focus all of your shots on the center of the target, and they will all hit actually before they disperse to the top and bottom of the screen. So that will be like destroying the target at like three to five times the uh, normal speed. Weapon power up. And getting all those extra hits in. Alright, I usually just boost through that ship that appears um, at the beginning of each wave after the previous wave's sentinel has been defeated and contains humans. If you shoot it, then the humans will fall, and then you need to catch them before they die in order to uh, boost your chain a little bit. But it's better not to even like allow the humans to appear on the screen if there's a chance that they might die, because if they appear on the screen and die, then your chain gets reset to zero. You can see now my chain is already at uh, 13,000, and it says human lost. And uh, also your multiplier goes down by 0.05%. It's not that big of a deal, but uh, the chain reset is kind of a big deal because it costs two points. However, if um, the humans kind of die before ever appearing on the screen because you let the ship carrying them get away, or you don't shoot the keepers that appear in waves, like the keepers from uh, the normal arcade mode, then um, that will not... I mean, you won't get credit for the human to a power-up, but at the same time, that will not reset... Um, your chain because the human is not actually lost. And there's also no penalty to your multiplier for that happening. You can see those um, enemies at the bottom of the screen that were shooting the lasers toward the top were actually turned were actually red and so are these enemies that are chasing me from the left. And the reason they're red is because I've allowed them to remain on the screen too long without destroying them and uh, they become more aggressive and uh, fire more bullets at you and stuff once they turn red. So it's kind of like a penalty for not uh, destroying everything right away. I mean, they're still like easy enough to dodge on this level, but uh, 
and some of the future levels the red enemies become a real menace. So uh, you try to avoid allowing that to happen in the first place. I'm just going to overdrive here and uh, destroy as much stuff as I can and then finish off the uh, sentinel before up. something ugly happens. I just grabbed that multiplier up token as I boosted into uh, the sentinel. And now would probably be a good time to grab all the other multiplier up tokens as well. So the fallen hero here gives me power shield, which speeds me up considerably because my uh, agility is set to zero and now it's at a 10. And uh, my overdrive is also at a 10 now instead of a five. So I'm gonna be able to overdrive for longer. Warning. Although that's not nearly as noticeable as the agility difference. If I got hit by anything, then instead of dying, I also just go back to not having a shield. Warning. Human in danger. Overdrive charged. Which is pretty bad, but obviously not as bad as dying. Weapon power up. I'm so used to dodging those multiplier up tokens that I forgot I decided I wanted to start getting them. <laughs> oh well, I'll get them soon. There's no rush. I collected all the humans, so now I can go ahead and destroy this sentinel. If you destroy it too early, then um, you just have too many humans on the screen for the next wave, and that can be bad. So you want to kind of slow down the onslaught by uh, leaving the sentinel on the screen, usually until you've uh, picked up all the humans. Unless it's about to get away or something. Multiplier up. Multiplier up. Multiplier up. Warning. Human in danger. Overdrive charged. There, I was kind of uh, in a hurry to destroy that one because there were a lot of. Uh, shots on the screen closing in on me from all directions, but uh, as you can see I just got really close to it and I had plenty of time. Just gonna pause and uh, catch my breath for a second. There's also no penalty at all for pausing in this game, even if you're going for a high score, you can, you know, just pause and catch your breath whenever you want without having to, you know, worry about your run being invalidated. And uh, I don't have any reservations about doing that. I actually should probably do it more because I kind of assume that the people with the highest scores probably do it themselves because the game lets you and uh, it is advantageous to like, you know, stop for a minute and just think about uh, what you're doing sometimes and like where you should go next, like uh, figure out whether you want to uh, save a human or let it die and uh, you know, just get as far away from the enemies as possible. There's a human I have plenty of time to save, even though it's far away, because uh, my boost drive is empty. And uh, my overgate drive gauge is also full, which is like an insurance policy, because if there's an endangered human and uh, I haven't recovered from boosting to save the last one, well then I can always overdrive and that'll slow down 
everything except me, and then use that time that that gives me to, uh, you know, get to the human and save it. So by now I think, uh, you see the general principles behind, uh, trying to achieve a high score at this game. It's just, um, <coughs> a good high score run is going to last an hour or longer. So, uh, a lot of it is just execution and, uh, you know, saving the humans consistently and, uh, avoiding hits and getting lucky. So here's where I overdrive, because I just exhausted my boost, and there's a human in danger really far away from me. Warning. Human in danger. Now I try to save all the humans and then defeat the sentinel in that order. Because uh, as soon as I defeat it, I will have new stuff on the screen to worry about. So I don't want, uh, you know, the uncompleted task of saving some humans from the previous wave to still be, like, hanging over my head. Sniffly, because uh, my allergies are acting up today. Should have taken some Sudafed before recording. I got that bridge restore token right in time because uh, as you can see it said human in danger on the other side of the screen and then I picked up the bridge restore token and it was like oh never mind because uh, that human actually wasn't being abducted he was falling and then a bridge magically appeared underneath him so he was saved. <laughs> if you need a bridge restore token you can also overdrive while the power up is spinning and slow down time to give yourself a chance to grab a guaranteed one instead of just hoping to get lucky at the right time. Multiplier up. Ditto for a bomb or a shield or whatever you need. I don't usually do that much because I like to save my overdrives uh, for situations where I really need them.
multiplier up. Multiplier up. I'm gonna go ahead and use a bomb there because I don't want to mess around for too long and uh, allow the sentinel to, to escape because uh, if you ever have to reset your sentinel destroyed chain, you get more and more points for each consecutive one you destroyed, but they're worth so many points that if you have to reset your chain, you might as well just completely give up because uh, you're not gonna get a high score then. Multiplier up. Warning. Human in danger. Warning. Human in danger. Also, it can be bad um, if you use your overdrive to save the humans but end up accidentally destroying too many enemies during the overdrive because uh, the release of the new humans is uh, kind of timed to the number of uh, enemies you've destroyed so far in the level. So if you destroy a whole bunch really quickly, then it'll release a whole bunch of new humans really quickly, and that's a good way to um, end up having some of them die.
So, I mean, it's tempting to, uh, you know, just destroy a whole bunch of enemies really quickly in style with that overdrive cannon while invincible, but, uh, think of the humans and don't do it. <laughs> think of the humans! Everyone wants to think of the cute puppies or the animals or uh, the starving children in Africa, but I like to think of the humans in general. And, uh, that's true of my economics as well. Oh no, I seem to have, uh, killed a human. With the spread fire. <laughs> Sometimes fighting stuff is dangerous when, uh, you know, there's humans, uh, on the ground underneath you next to those, uh, pits of water. I'm doing what I told you not to do a second ago and just letting loose with the cannon and shredding through everything because I already lost a human and my chain is pretty low right now so I don't care if it gets reset again. I totally missed uh, the carrier ship for that wave because uh, I was too busy clearing out the uh, beginning of wave guys that uh, track you horizontally and just zip back and forth in rows because they move really fast and uh, I didn't want to leave them on the screen and forget about them and then just have uh, one of them come out of nowhere later on and hit me. And you have to make trade-offs in this game um, a lot of the time because you just don't have enough time to do what everything you could be doing whether it's like you know um, destroying the enemies around you or like dodging like some bullets that are flying at you and like saving the humans also sometimes you just have to choose something and uh, forsake all other tasks and uh, this game really is a game about multitasking because uh, the more you can keep all of the things that are going on in mind including like the whole screen and not just the part of it that's um, in the foreground then the better you're going to do so uh Playing this game really does train your brain in order to be better at, uh, you know, multitasking and uh, keeping uh, all of the elements of a problem in mind instead of uh, just what's in front of your eyes. I mean, I know it's a pretty fast action game, so it seems like more of a twitch reflex game, but uh, there's a lot of problem solving skills involved in playing this game well. <laughs> That was kind of a strange way to destroy that guy. I just did like a little shoop. A little zoop. Alright. Multiplier up. You can see my multiplier is at like 35 already. Um, I think the highest I've ever gotten it has been like 46 or 47. So uh, it only realistically gets so high. Multiplier up. I couldn't get to that guy in time. <sighs> I 
multiplier up. Overdrive charged. Might as well pick up these guys while I'm down here. Multiplier up. Warning. Human in danger. Warning. Multiplier up. Warning. Human in danger. Shield ah, I definitely pressed the boost button in time to boost before being hit there. I was totally Human robbed. Lost. I know I'm slow as molasses because I don't have my power shield. And uh, the hard part is I need to pick up two shield tokens in a row now without getting hit again Overdrive in order to get my power shield back. So I'm gonna do that slow down time thingy to get the first one right here. Multiplier up. And I'll just try to be really careful. I don't think I can build my overdrive in time to uh, slow down time again on the next power up. Yes, I did it just in time. Bomb, shield, there we go. And I can also use my overdrive to... Uh, sometimes it's better to use your overdrive itself to clear out all the stuff that's surrounding the sentinel. And then use your main cannon to destroy the sentinel Complete. itself. Like that. Because the overdrive doesn't... On the higher levels, the overdrive doesn't really do that much damage to the sentinel itself. But it does tear through um, all the other enemies. Multiplier up. Overdrive charged. Just gonna let that human die. Human lost. Human in danger. Human lost. I bombed there just because um I wasn't sure whether I was gonna be able to destroy that sentinel with my main cannon in time. And I was kind of close to getting hit also. I might have been able to save that Overdrive bomb. Charged.
I'm gonna take the bomb back by slowing down time. My multiplier is already pretty high, but um, the limiting factor to my success at some point, if I don't get unlucky and get hit soon, is gonna be that I'm running out of gonna run out of bombs. I destroyed that sentinel with a bomb the cheap way. And I'm going to be doing that more and more as the game uh, continues. These revenge bullets are a pain in the butt. Not talking much here because I'm just trying to focus. Human lost. Warning. Human in danger. I think I can get this and uh, get the sentinel to appear in time. And then destroy it. Multiplier up. Overdrive charged. As promised, just in time before the uh, power up went away. I stalled a little bit before picking it up just to uh, kill some stuff first and uh, bring myself closer to the end of the level. <laughs>
That was close. <laughs> I'm doing well. I'm over 1.3 billion and I'm looking for a 1.875 billion. Let's see if I can finish strong. Erg, getting a little overwhelmed here. <laughs> Careful. All right, I'm not messing around now. As soon as a sentinel appears, I just bomb it. Bomb. Oh, I lost my shield there. I hit the bomb button like in plenty of time, but uh, maybe a little bit of input lag. There's no way I'm getting my shield back at this point. It's just gone. Alright. Another Operation sentinel down. In danger. Overdrive charged. I was totally cornered there. My only way out was to overdrive. And I have no bombs. So things are looking grim. Warning. Human in danger. All right, and that's all she wrote. So um, I'm really happy with that run. I didn't get a world record, <laughs> and I didn't get a, a personal best, but I came uh, within 200 million of a personal best. As you can see here, I am uh, Blues Jockey 1, number 27 right now on the leaderboard for a Resogun survival mode. And that's actually the first time that I uh, recorded a high score attempt using my video capture card and commentary. So hopefully the video process is okay. And I hope um, you enjoyed watching this and learned something. See, I only played for uh, 44 minutes and 21 seconds. And uh, you can go through the info about uh, the games of uh, the players on the scoreboard. The number one player is Formshift88, and he played for uh, one hour and seven minutes and 47 seconds to get his high score of 7,475,000,000. I was trying to figure out whether that was trillion or billion. Thankfully, it's only billion. Nobody has figured out how to get a trillion points at a Rezo gun yet, but I'm sure where there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> Alright, thanks for watching. I will be back soon and uh, try to make some more of these.